Welcome to Mr. V Teaching Math. Once again, we are looking at the division of decimals. This time we're going to add a little bit extra layer of complexity. There is now a decimal here. I could complete this question the way it's written, and it would work. However, I have to do lots of decimals and all decimal multiplication, and there's a little trick that I can do. What I can do is I can move the decimal. I can take this here decimal and go one, two, move it here. However, if I move it two spaces here, I must also move it two spaces here. Now you might think, but didn't you just change the question? Well, the answer will be the same. As long as the decimal moves the exact same number of spaces in both parts of the question, it will work every time. But it must move the exact same number of spaces. I've moved it two spaces here, I'm going to move it two spaces here. No more, no less, exactly the same. So, my new decimal has been moved and it is now here. This number, this question is now actually 6 into 84. And my decimal sitting here. That's what this question has become. It's an important to note that difference. 6 goes into 8 once. 1 times 6 is 6. I will subtract. I'm left with 2. I'm going to carry down the 4. 6 into 24 goes 4 times. 4 times 6 is 24. I subtract. I have a remainder of 0. The answer to the question is 14. Another example. Once again, I have a decimal here. I'm going to move it. I move it one space. Since I've moved that one one space, this one also moves one space. There is a tendency of some students to think, oh, I moved it to the end, so I'll just move this right to the end. And that would be wrong. I moved one space here, this moves one space. So my new decimal is sitting here, and this is now sitting here. Many students find this kind of confusing, so it is not a bad idea to get in the habit of rewriting your questions after you've moved the decimal, because then it gets rid of some of that clutter. Some people can work with this quite easily and get correct answers, but some people will get messed up by the extraneous information. So, here we go. 13 into 5, it does not work. 13 into 52, it works. How many times? Hmm. Well, this is about 50. This is about 10. So I think it might work five times. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do 13 times five, I come up with 65. Oh, that's definitely too big. All right. Uh, let's try another number. I'm going to try three. Actually, I would normally choose four and go one less, but I'm doing this for a reason. You'll see in a moment. Three times three is nine. One times three is 39. Oh, that'll work nicely. So here I go. I'll do three. And because I know of the mistake I'm making, I'll just switch into pencil so I can erase it in a minute. 3, 3 times 13 is 39, and I'm going to subtract. Uh, 9 into 2 doesn't work, I need to borrow. 9 into 12 gives me 3, 4 from 3 gives me 13. Excellent! No, that's not excellent. If this number is the same size as this, or greater, I messed up. This number here must always be less than that number. Always. It must always be less. If it's equal to or greater, I made a mistake. And the fact is, I did indeed make a mistake. So, I know that 3 is too low, because I had a 13 sitting there. So I have to be using 14. Oh, look, it comes out perfectly. That's quite nice. The answer is 0 decimal 4. Next question. Once again, I have a decimal. I don't want it here. I'm going to move that decimal over. 1, 2. Again, 1, 2. Not right to the end. Two spaces over. So my question is now...
25 into 0 doesn't, oh wait, I, I made a mistake. Got to put the decimal at the top first. 25 into 0 doesn't work. 25 into 1 does not work. Add a 0. 25 into 10 does not work. Add another 0. 25 into 100, that works. That's a dollar, and that's 25 cents. It's four times. Answer is 0 decimal zero 04. All right, I'm gonna move this decimal. Now, this is another mistake I've often seen people make. They go like this, I'll move the decimal. Oh, there's no decimal here, so I'm done. Lazy mathematician has left out the decimal. The lazy mathematician's invisible decimal is right there. You have to move that two spaces over. And some people, will, again, will make the mistake of, okay, I'll move it two spaces over and it still remains 34. No, I go one, two, and then you must fill in those new spaces with placeholder zeros. Your decimal has to be there. You now end up 17 to 3,400. Once again, 17 and your decimal is here and your decimal is there. You're now ready to start dividing. 17 into 3 doesn't work. 17 into 34. Hmm, how many times is that? I'm going to guess 2. 14, carry the 1. 34, exactly. Look at that. That's 2. 34. And then you'll also have another mistake people make here. Oh, look, the answer is 2. No, it isn't. The decimal is here. There are two place values empty. This is why it's so important to make sure you line up everything as straightly as you possibly can. The answer to this is 200. Because you have to fill in placeholder zeros. This zero actually has no meaning in this case. But those two do because this is where the decimal is. Any zeros between a number and a decimal have meaning. Watch out for that. 